so the last time I I, I mistaken the time shown here, so I I speed up a lot, and so I I left a lot of time for question. Uh, this time, still a lot of time for question, <laughs> definitely. So also uh, you can see uh, on the PowerPoint there, the first author is Wang Yang, but since uh, he had some uh, family issue, uh, I'll present this PowerPoint for you, uh, for for him. Uh, so today today's topic is how to detect facial manipulation image using CNN. Uh, uh, so facial manipulation uh, in today's world it might equals to deep fakes, face web, face to face, face app. Uh, so much uh, popular uh, uh, like face face uh, manipulation tools. Uh, it's very I mean, this topic is quite hot since everyone thinks this is a uh, uh, very interesting technology. Then plan make very very funny stuff. So, uh, in academia or or in this area, we we just call it facial manipulation, and it actually breaks down to many other uh, many other sub field. Uh, some of our uh, facial uh, some of our paste and uh, copy and paste detection, some of our uh, image resizing detection. Uh, but now here, uh, we, uh, as a text-oriented uh, topic, we split this as a two uh, major subtopic. Uh, one is face swapping. Uh, it's a, uh, we, we, this face swapping contain, uh, just like, uh, t uh, contains technology just like deepfake. Uh, face web, this kind of technology, and then we'll talk about um, more traditional technology, uh, face merging. So by first merging, I mainly means uh, the technology that uh, that is. Uh, so it, uh, it's called. Uh, oh, maybe I'll uh, turn to the other side. I, I'll see the name. Sorry. <laughs> so let's look at what deepfakes can do. Recently, so I'll show you some video we downloaded from the YouTube. So I think um, I should have some. So uh, uh, from the uh, you actually you can search uh, many video or uh, uh, material on the internet that uh, people use this, this technology to make some funny video. Uh, they make, they use Nicolas Cage uh, information and make, just replace the actor in the video or uh, movie. Uh, so you can see Nicolas Cage everywhere. Uh, so, uh, and also some other famous actors and actresses. So, uh, and all, all of the video seems quite natural. If you do not, uh, Observe them very closely and very uh, discreetly. You cannot actually see the manipulation artifacts. So in this video, there's an artifact. You can see some of the frame haven't been changed. Uh, this might because of the miss detection for the target face. Uh, a little we'll talk about why this will happen. <coughs> and this is also. You can see when the target target sub uh, the target person uh, raised his hand and blocked some part of the face, uh, the face uh, detector cannot detect the landmark, and which will results uh, the uh, miss replacement or the uh, leave some frame uh, as original as original. Okay, here is some. Uh, there is also uh, James and uh, uh, Curry. But this is t uh, but this not this is not face swapping technology. It's more like uh, uh, doing a average operation by summing two subjects face together, and and get a face that possess both subjects uh, face characteristics. You can see the. Outcome on the uh, right, uh, he looks like Curry and James, mm -hmm. at the same time. 
Uh, and this is also another example. Uh, so this example sh shows that a face merging sometimes occur, uh, occur run into difficulty be uh, because uh, if the two subjects at face uh, varies too much, they cannot actually uh, get the average face very uh, precisely. So you can see it's not that natural on the right picture. So, so this we these examples will get you a sense of uh, so what's the technology is all about and what it can achieve. And so, these these technology we think that um, as today's multimedia world evolving so fast that we trust the information on the internet. So, uh, especially the video, uh, since the picture or the voice uh, is uh, are less. Uh, takes less credit for why it pre uh, why it presents. Uh, people rely more and more on video, but now video is uh, more subject to uh, very powerful editing tools like deepfake and face merging. But these tools are already already part of the open API provided on the internet. Uh, so now we will see how these uh, technology uh, are in front of the current detection systems. We'll take um, so we'll look at some uh, online open uh, API, uh, the facial recognition system from Microsoft Azure. <coughs> we use their open API to detect the. So we give them, we feed the system with real images from Nicolas Cage and the uh, deepfake uh, generated face. So the system thinks that it's kind of 86 percent of uh, they have 86 confidence that they are the same person, uh, which is to our human observer, uh, it's uh, the same people. So it fools the system. We also look at the Amazon AWS cloud service and even higher confidence. So the system itself. Also made a very confident mistake. <coughs> so, how how did they uh, made it happen? Uh, we look at the code they write, and we and a lot of uh, deep fake mater uh, material and film movie. We summarize some characteristics, and I want to show you. Uh, the first is that. Deepfake uh, swap victims' face in every frame independently, so it doesn't take consideration. Uh, it doesn't take the uh, like uh, frame int uh, dependencies. Uh, the information on time series is part of the generation uh, generating process generation uh, generating material, so it, it's more. Uh, it, it more focused on uh, the natural. How natural it looks uh, in the spatial spa uh, in in three D space uh, in or or I can say in two D space. And the second char characteristic is that it's not end to end. So by this we mean that the generation the diff a fake face generation process consists of several sub uh, sub stages. Uh, the first stage is to Use human or uh, face uh, face landmark detector or something to detect the target face from the source video, and to get a set of uh, subject of image data sets. Uh, and of course, uh, it's uh, we can have both the real faces and the fake faces. And since in the second stage, that since we have these two. A set of uh, face data sets. Uh, we can use deep learning technology to learn the mapping relationship between the real face and fake face. And to, uh, yeah, but, but in other words, just train the neural network to uh, convert uh, A face to B face uh, with some correct, uh, with some e expression or uh, with some uh, with some characteristic characteristic of the face unchanged, we change the 
subjects' appearances. And in the third stage, after we trained the deepfake model, uh, we feed the system, or uh, we feed deepfake with unseen data, unseen images uh, from subject we want to replace. And then we can generate the uh, face we want uh, from B pay, from B person, and re and then replace the uh, and uh, use the technology to paste the face back to the source video, and complete the fake video generation process. Uh, so the third uh, and I want to talk about the third characteristic is that. Uh, now th this video or uh, this technology uh, uh, now only mani manipulates the central face area, so so it's because its objective is to detect or to fake uh, mostly the f uh, facial expression or uh, face appearances. Uh, it doesn't care much about the video background. It doesn't change uh, the uh, other places. Uh, this might give us an additional actually detecting maybe uh, maybe it's a kind of vulnerability of this technology uh, and the third characteristic is uh, uh, we find this technology is, uh, the deep learning model here they use is the auto is an auto encoder uh, also we found recently there are more advanced deep learning architecture uh, some things uh, they used GAN, again with self attention, and some some of them use uh, the information from time series. They add ASTM or some 3D convolution. Uh, they they might achieve better performance, uh, but we think they still have the vulnerability of the uh, deepfake only uh, based on only on auto encoder. Uh, later we will, uh, we will elaborate more why they possess the same vulnerability. Uh, also, th th this is a brief introduction for how they generate such face. Uh, if we want to, since we have a lot of time, I'll get uh, 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 get deeper. Uh, so I mentioned <coughs> how how to train. Uh, uh, deepfake model that learns the mapping relationship between the source face to the target uh, to to the target face. Uh, the auto encoder here is actually a two stage process. So as you can see, the PowerPoint. Uh, let's say the uh, let's say we have uh, two uh, two subjects here, person A and person B, uh, by using by using the uh, face detector to get the face uh, face information out uh, and cut them into pieces, so we can get to uh, a data set that containing two label and use an encoder. Uh, by encoder, I mean uh, to uh, how to say uh, to compress uh, the image information from higher di dimension to a smaller dimension. Uh, with with less information loss, uh, so, so uh, the auto encoder based deepfake uh, have the character characteristic like uh, they actually use some part of the same weights in encoder air uh, encoder stage because uh, they want to encode person A and person B's face uh, at least in the same manner. Or in a similar, a simil, uh, in a manner that has some similarity, uh, and this is the basis that late for later the decoder to de to comprehend the compressed information uh, back to the uh, uh, higher dimension data. And so, with, with this uh, encoder uh, in in the first stage to. Uh, compress person A and person B's picture into a in, into a compressed representation. Uh, the training process then uh, trains uh, decoder A and decoder B to map the compressed information to the original A and original B. 
So by gradually feeding the information mapping re relationship uh, using back propaga uh, back propagation, uh, we can learn such a, a set of weights that can map from the compressed representation to person A and person B using two decoder. So now we have like one one encoder, two decoder, uh, and this will uh will let us achieve the face generation, uh, face generating to, uh, process. Um, so by using the uh, uh, autoencoder, we can convert person A, uh, person A's face to a person B's face. Uh, uh, as for, but how do we, how do we paste the uh, uh, generated face back to the target video? Uh, so, so it's uh, so here the technology actually uses kind of a more traditional technique. Uh, it's called portion image editing. So, uh, portion image editing is uh, it was proposed like several many years ago. Uh, it it just uh, ca uh, it calculates the whole image gradient information. Uh, it, ha it it formulates uh, the gradient characteristic uh, to give the uh, to to sum up a set of constraints, uh, and this constraint will dictate the uh, the image margin process to keep the margin area, or we say the boundary between the unedited uh, unedited area and the edited area. Uh, their their boundary can be very smooth uh, with the color information, texture information, uh, uh, we, uh, with uh, remain or we can say uh, untouched. So if you are interested in how they uh, implement such merging uh, or we say uh, portion image editing, you can search online. It's kind of public. <laughs> so um so we talked about how to generate deep fake images in detail and now let's look at uh how face merging is so since fa face merging i said it's a more traditional it's a kind of more traditional uh uh image processing technique so no no deep learning no no artificial intelligence used here um, but this this technique actually plays very well. We later we find that the data uh, data faked by th this technology is actually harder to detect. Uh, but we don't know why for now. Uh, but this technology that uh, it use uh, use human or face detector to first uh, it de uh, get two subjects face out, and then it use uh, Dynoray triangulation. Uh, it's a technique that can uh, cut uh, uh, on the basis uh, on the basis of detecting face detect uh, face landmark manner inf information. With this uh, coordinator, it cuts the face into several sub triangles. Uh, yes, triangle. Uh, this this triangle will then be fed into. Uh, uh, sum or uh, average in pro operation to calculate the uh, how they how they um, uh, concant concant uh, how to paste all these tri triangular all together. So um, the the new position they have is actually the average position from subject A and sub subject B, and finally it will have the uh, final image that possesses the uh, characteristic from all of the participants, uh, which is the baby's face and the the adult's face. Uh, but actually, you can you can use more uh, as many human face you can. And now here we only list two. <coughs> Um, so let's get to how to 
uh, detect it. Uh, since uh, uh, actually uh, ma uh, there's other research work and there are also presentation on, like have shown on uh, cybersecurity conferences and also the computer vision based uh, academia uh, conferences have proposed some of the solution. Uh, here we present a uh, simple and effective CM method. Uh, we think that uh, with fish, uh, with image manipulated by the people, we think that this technology uh, ha affects the lower level features and also the higher feature, uh, higher level features. We think the CN is a very powerful uh, feature ex extractor and uh, classifier. So we, we want to try if how, uh, how this technology work in this uh, problem. So, uh, so we, so uh, for the deepfake, uh, deepfake data, since it manipulates the central face area, uh, with other area unchanged, we, we use face detector to detect uh, um, uh, actually, we think uh, a bigger background or uh, a bigger field for the uh, for the CN based uh, classifier to perceive. We want the classifier to see the boundary between the face area and the margin we we keep up here. We can say the background. And so the characteristic here is that it's a very simple thing. We only use three convolution layer and achieve very high detection accuracy. Uh, it's like uh, it's like uh, what you train a uh, 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 viable or uh, or uh, train an OK model on um, mixed data set. So ever it's a very easy task to find. We also think that this is not the only solution. Uh, we also uh, do some architecture uh, tuning, and, but we have to find this one is kind of uh, at least uh, performs based on our data set uh, uh, with 98 uh, uh, classification accuracy and 98 uh, accuracy on face version. So it has like 16. Uh, convolution, convolutional layer, three by three, and thirty-two one by one convolution layer, and thirty-three three by three convolution layer, and then uh, we swap out two fully connected layer, mapping to uh, real and fake prediction. Um, for the data set we use here for uh, to test, uh, we. So there's a uh, there's actually a public available data set from DeepTimit and uh, YouTube, and you can download uh, these data from uh, from these from sources. So in this experiment, we have uh, 140,000 uh, fake faces and real faces, uh, fake faces and real faces, uh, with uh, with low quality and high quality images. Uh, uh, these these quantity differences may come from the deep uh, They they want to let the data to be more representative. And for the data set we use for face merge, uh, we use the LFW and HG face. It's a popular database uh, of the internet for a face face recognition area. Uh, with uh, yes, uh, also and if, uh, it's kind of one to one proportion, so we don't have to do the punishment in training. Uh, and we use uh, Baidu Face Machine API to get the fake faces. Um, uh, this is the, uh, uh, also available API service on the internet. Uh, and then we use, we use the same pre pre process, uh, pre process technique. Uh, we use multi test CNN. To detect uh, uh, human faces, cut them out as a final training data, and with a larger bounding box. 
And finally, we use the for current of sleeping rather than zooming, sharing transformation. Uh, it's a kind of a typical operation we used before feeding the uh, entry information to the model to enhance the presentation from the, uh, in the real world. So I, I just uh, talked about how the CNN-based solution actually performed well and how we did it uh, on two tests, uh, both deepfake and Facebook. So, so then we thought about uh, what if other, uh, let's say, public aware, uh, pu public uh, available service or system, they might uh, have the potential to detect such differences. So, uh, we thought about uh, uh, we thought about FaceNet. So, uh, FaceNet is actually uh, uh, widely used in car facial recognition system. Uh, it's the, uh, also a CNN based architecture, but with a special, uh, special training method. Uh, it's called Triplet Boss. So, Triplet Loss here is, uh, tri Triplet Loss here uh, is actually uh, a loss function uh, whose objective is to uh, minimize the distance between samples within a label, but maximizing the distance between uh, between different labels, between samples from different labels, so that the representation the CNN app actually learns is to learn the, the biggest difference to make the output value more separable in a certain dimension. So it's, it's a very uh, powerful, uh, it has a very uh, high classification accuracy on the risk test. But, but as I, as I, uh, we have shown on the, uh, the previous slides uh, on Microsoft or Azure, uh, the, the, their API detection systems, the big face and real face, they have high similarity. Uh, maybe the in the uh, on the back uh, on the other on, the, the, on the air service they also just face it but differently. So in training, uh, we only use uh, we find the uh, open source implementation. Uh, we follow their uh, usage and only use the face central face area with no margin no background only face area and use FaceNet as an inference tool to get the embeddings uh, for two labels, the fake face and the real face. Uh, we use this embedding as a feature uh, fit into a SVM classification model and uh, train, train the model to learn uh, the fake and real uh, differences. And the accuracy is uh, actually quite high. Uh, so we see, so, so we now we find that actually traditional uh, human recognition uh, algorithm, uh, although it, uh, to some extent it can be fooled, but their embedding actually carries the different information uh, from the uh, real data and the fake data. Uh, so it has like 93 accuracy for the fake. Uh, 64 accuracy for face margin. Uh, face margin is, uh, is less, but, but it's effective at least. So I'll show you uh, the detention demo uh, demonstration from two methods. Uh, so we take a short video. So uh, this this short video is from the dataset Deep Tinted. Uh, we we train our uh, classification model and plot the prediction accuracy in real time and find okay can detect the defect and also we try the fitness with SPM classifier. Okay, 
So uh, yeah, it's, it does in the office day as the best way to uh, some of the real picture it turns red a little bit, but overall it's all also working. Um, so so in ideal uh, so in ideal situation uh, it's working. So we also want to see this in the uh, in the current environment uh, many of the media processed uh, major. Uh, the most uh, represented uh, technique is the resizing operation and the com compression operation. Uh, but more in, in more detail, uh, well, there is a small, uh, small, um, let's see, uh, small mistake. So the A, a image is actually uh, represents. Uh, how two methods perform under uh, uh, JPG compression. So JPGX is actually a standard picture processing uh, protocol. So it, uh, so it, yeah, yeah, you actually can choose uh, the level the level you want to compress uh, from the uh, original data. And on the right, uh, the figure actually. Uh, shows how uh, how our two methods fall under uh, the in, uh, binary interpolation, uh, which is the uh, default resizing operation. Uh, so when you do picture resize uh, or something, uh, you open CV, you write CV2 dot resize. If you don't name the answer you choose, you use uh, binary interpolation. It's a uh, the uh, event uh, uh, calculates the uh, uh, image, the pixel value with uh, with a hypothesis. Uh, so anyway, you, uh, uh, we here on the left we can see that actually the face net based uh, master are less sensitive to GPG compression versus the single CNN. He performs better uh, at uh, at a uh, less compression level, but as compression goes deeper, as uh, more information lost in the JPG compression, uh, mostly on um, quantization uh, in the JPG compression process, the simultaneous method performance drop uh, steeply, uh, very, uh, very fast, and so we we think uh, these two methods might capture different uh, different feature. Uh, we also searched the exact process of how JPG compression work. So the major information loss happens in quantization. Say. So in, the, in JPG JPG uh, in JPG uh, compression, the image is split into many small blocks, uh, which is Eight by eight uh, pixel block, and this pixel block can be represented uh, by uh, many uh, a lot of uh, eight eight by eight uh, small images uh, by using a frequency transform or this discrete Fourier transform. Uh, so the lower uh, the, the, the more you compress the original data, uh, the, higher, uh, the more higher frequency information is lost during the quantumization. Uh, but it, it, it was uh, research in this area. Uh, on the right side, the, uh, it's the actual value size. We found these two methods perform, at least uh, they react to this method uh, almost the same. So I'll do a summary again. So for so we present uh, two effective methods for detecting deepfake. Uh, we think that uh, from our point of view, we think that CNN capture low level features uh, like texting uh, uh, and contour edges. And for face net, we think that this is more robust under higher frequency information loss. Think maybe uh, okay, you capture more higher high level feature, 
uh, we explain it like this. Uh, but at least we, we have proved that the CNN uh, can work can work under this problem. Uh, also, human cannot identify fake faces and real faces, but CNN does. Although it's for now, it's not that kind of explainable. Uh, I think we can work on this tool to make it more make sense. Well, uh, for CNN, we also experiment uh, with some pre-trained model like Meso D4. Uh, this research paper is also uh, doing the same thing as we do, They're using different data. And in, the, in their paper, they also you, uh, introduced Meso D4 with exception for architecture pre-trained model. Uh, we also experiment with VGG16 and exception. These are all very uh, classical CNN model. Uh, we find that uh, uh, these transfer learning results is also achieved a uh, very high accuracy. That, so that's why we say, uh, maybe in this such test, uh, there's no, doesn't require too much architecture tuning. Uh, seeing just basically it's, itself is a very good tool. Uh, and all of this is uh, only use single frame information. Uh, it doesn't use multi frame. It doesn't consider the time, uh, the information time series. And thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, great talk. So I think now we have a little bit of time for Q and A. Uh, before we go to Slido, uh, any questions from the floor? Yes, sir. So with the advent of the deep fake technology, what would be the implication of this with regards to mobile or remote KYC process? So uh, I'm sure, well, what is KYC from? Know your customer. Oh, know your customer. KYC. So about this, we uh, mean how this deep, uh, deep fake technology can be applied to uh, the product. <coughs> uh, so uh, uh, basically, uh, banks, uh, payment systems, they require people to uh, submit their uh, personal information and uh, that uh, identifies them that they are who they claim they are. So it's a, it's a identification system. Yeah, it, it proves that you, uh, that is your identity. That's the KYC process that banks and payment systems require. So you think how deepfake uh, does deepfake has potential to cheat such system? Yes. Okay. So we think uh, yes, deepfake can cheat such system. Uh, with uh, the, the fact that many people doesn't uh, know about or did such thing uh, is because maybe uh, they haven't. Tried, uh, but uh, it's a, actually a detect and we think it's a very a has a threat to the system. And the system now, only uh, the AI system we use now for finance, uh, for many uh, security crucial circumstances and so condition, the uh, they actually from that uh, they haven't considered too much about how what if. Uh, people use this technology to deceive them because the defect is actually new. Uh, did, did it appear only uh, two years ago? So, yeah, so maybe this kind of defense uh, will also evolve rapidly. Yeah. That was a great question. Any more questions from the floor? Thank you. Yes. Uh, we, we are all the book. If uh, the video is degraded, uh, the video is degraded. Uh, so the video is uh, can be degraded by several means. Uh, so, uh, particular when video now video is transmitted uh, mostly by standards like H two six four, and this uh, and the and the compression process is uh, mainly they, they use multi frame. That they consider the time, the information time, by using that to compress the image, uh, compress the video stream uh, 
uh, in a smaller chunk. Uh, we, uh, in this research, we use the uh, JPG compression to, uh, to resemble that uh, information loss or image degree. Uh, so we find that uh, so we find that these two methods perform different differently under the uh, uh, image degrading. Uh, but as for uh, but there is so there is one more thing here. Uh, so if the video is so degraded or so damaged that uh, the human cannot observe, so why should we uh, require the fake detector to detect it? Right? So here we find that uh, if the GPG compression level is drops, uh, compression level is too high. I mean, we compress it too small. Uh, we find the image itself is actually very blur. Uh, and in this case, the detector cannot detect it. And we think uh, it makes sense. So uh, I, I don't know if that, uh, that's my kind of perspective on this kind of uh, problem. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? If not, we'll go to the first question on Slido. Um, the first one with the top notes. Uh, is there any easy to use tool available for the general public to detect or determine if it's real or fake given the fact that this technology can be used for malicious propaganda? Any uh, publicly available tool for detection? Um, so this is also a typical uh, case where people leave the final choice to an AI system because a uh, human itself will be a human cannot observe the difference, and that's the CN to detect it for itself. So uh, we actually uh, open such, uh, we actually open source the, the services and API, so people can call it. Uh, I didn't leave the link in the PowerPoint, uh, 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 but I can provide you uh, provide the link, so you can post the request, and you will return. Uh, the results. So the, the the API will tell you where the human faces and the score of seeing uh, how deep it is uh, with, uh, yeah, with percentage confidence. So there is two uh, way open source tool. Um, it can be used for malicious uh, human uh, yeah. but, 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 but we also think that also, now we can detect it and classify it, but the next uh, uh, next tool or mean to explain it. I think that that's the most important because, uh, like data forensics area, uh, uh, we cannot jump into a conclusion uh, so abruptly. Maybe we need more uh, reasonable process. I think uh, I think this is a good question to determine. Uh, I think we still have a long way to go to determine, uh, even if we know that CNN is, uh, is an effective, effective tool. Who is TN? Is he in the room? Okay. Price for uh, highest number of votes. Okay, uh, the next question with the same number of high votes. Okay. Um, but how long I think uh, means uh, the start the start point is uh, when we input the image and the result in, uh, and the time you use to inference the result. Yeah. Um, is Mastor here? Can you elaborate on the question? Also, the actually the inference time for the image here is quite small. Uh, so actually, you can see a uh, bunch. Uh, a bunch. Can say more about the question. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah uh, maybe, uh, how long it uh, did it take? Uh, uh, is uh, about your experiments uh, while you uh, input the images uh, to to get the best uh, uh, the best. Is the score the best score for the type of molecular Okay, uh, so so yeah, we, we used to worry about the time it takes to uh, 
to, uh, for the model to take a guess, uh, but we find that actually pretty fast for the simple scheme method. But it's uh, most it's slower for face net. See, let's say this answer. Since the latter uh, consists of more complicated architecture, uh, so uh, but but even for the latter one, it only takes about minus a uh, for one prediction. And if you want to speed up there, you can uh, you can stack up the input as batch and just use batch inferencing. Uh, yeah, GPU operation gradually, so the time is very, uh, very quick. We can do uh, almost uh, real time image or real time video processing uh, at every frame depth and give you a score. Just like the video I showed you, uh, there was red, red uh, triangle, or there was red uh, rectangle. Yeah. So it's seen as the best technique. For now, uh, for now, okay, is the best. So I, I think well, we also look at other uh, data forensics techniques. Uh, there are traditional ones that uh, look at the image, uh, 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 image, uh, the information in the parcel information, the image timestamp, and uh, and also other. I think there's uh, maybe there is no best algorithm or technology, but can be applied uh, in different scenario. Uh, I think uh, depends on uh, what the scenario is and what what we desire. Uh, because uh, maybe the shortcoming of saying is that you cannot explain it. Just just give you a score. But as a method, like traditionally, you get a bunch of experts together in a room. They will determine if it's a real thing. Uh, of course, the latter one more expensive, but give you more explanation. Thank you. So we get a prize as well. I'll give that to you a little bit later. What's um, oh, GH? How can we differentiate a deep fake or real image if you have no training or experience? I mean, uh, as a human, I mean, not, not seeing it. Uh, since, uh, you mean, since uh, maybe I have many experience in training, so I don't use CNN, uh, I can. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but personally, I think uh, I saw many if they can real images. Uh, as a human observer, I can tell the difference. But it's true. But like human eyes is also uh, CNN is inspired by human. Uh, I can actually I can to some degree. So if I maybe that's not the question. Can I a, is GH here? The one who posted this question. Um, it's you. Can you like expert? Can you elaborate on the question? You mean for CNN to do, uh, to tell the difference or for for mm -hmm. the, the purpose of making fake is to not to corrupt. So how do we educate people to to know that it's not a real one? Uh, I think uh, it's more like we should uh, it's kind of uh, maybe we can educate people or uh, to. Let more people know that okay, there might be a threat or there might be a possibility that somebody uh, made this thing. Uh, it's not true. And if they have such uh, critical points, maybe that will help. Uh, but as for determining this real thing, if you have more training experience. Oh, I mean, by looking at the image, uh, yeah. you see that. Uh, fake images are uh, have a have a vulnerability. I thought that that is many in my area. You can see the fake fake faces, uh, their eyes, blurred. and it doesn't uh, that's what I 
uh, less details compared to the real images. <coughs> and, and sometimes you can see the, uh, the, the teeth. So since the training data, the real, real images and I mean, the person A and the B images. Uh, although they have many face, face, faces, but not, most of them have uh, their teeth show up. Show up. So the model might, might not be able to learn how the teeth might look, looks like. So, so when the model generates fake faces, or, or fake faces uh, the teeth is one of the shortcomings of the deep learning model. And also, some uh, as for image generation to like uh, like game, like cycle game, a big game, many people are probably interested to that. But then they find that uh, some of the fake faces that it doesn't have a uh, complete uh, glasses, the, the fake the generate only generates the part of the uh, glasses. Yeah. But this is also due to the fact that the the data set here is not, is not that uh, representative. This is worse. So, we think if you want to observe in detail, these, these are some of the artifacts. Okay, I think we have time for one last question uh, before I go to Slido. Anyone from the audience want to ask a question? No, then perhaps you go to Slido and you can choose okay. whichever one. Oh, I think this is <coughs> probably the top one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, personally, I think definitely government might be interesting. I think government has, has already been interesting for uh, quite a long time. Uh, so, so, so I think government used uh, this technology to find suspects. I mean, I saw news around the world, and and in uh, and in uh, certain, uh, if you want to pass some uh, important uh, message, uh, there's a camera and take your uh, your information. Uh, not not fingerprint, but but more today is uh, take your. Uh, human uh, face uh, face picture. Uh, they, they, they take it because they might have the information back into their data, database and compare it. Uh, so I think uh, definitely, and it's, uh, it's more accessible because everyone shows their face. Right? Okay. So that I think uh, we should all give a big round of applause to Jay for a great presentation.